the idea that there are objects that don't come back to themselves under 360 degrees of rotation, but require 720, is probably something you've never thought about before in your life. But without that, you wouldn't have the Pauli exclusion principle. You wouldn't have the stability of matter. So this spinner is one of the coolest, most important objects anywhere, and it was discovered to be important in physics by a guy named Paul Dirac. Okay, so this 720 theory is entirely responsible for the world that we live in, and nobody knows about it. Right? Like, unless you're hanging out with physicists, they don't tell you that electromagnetism has to do with the fact that there's a secret circle at every point in space and time that's invisible to you. It's called a spinner. And that spinner is how we model the electron, the neutrino, quarks. All that is spinorial matter. Well, we know it's there because there was this problem with the Schrodinger equation. The Schrodinger equation takes one derivative in terms of the direction of time and takes two derivatives in the direction of all the spatial directions. But because Einstein told us that space and time are woven together, for the theory to be relativistic, you need the same number of derivatives of time as of space, because space-time is sort of one kind of semi-unified object. All right, that means you either have to boost the number of derivatives of time up to two to match the two derivatives in the directions of space, or you have to knock two derivatives in the spatial directions down to one derivative to get it to be equal. Now, one direction gets you to something called the Klein-Gordon equation. What Dirac did is he took a square root of the Klein-Gordon equation to get these spinners. So he had these numbers. He didn't understand at first that he was going to get kicked into this world of spinners. He came up with a square root equation in which A times B, thought to be numbers, was not equal to B times A. It was like equal to the negative of B times A. So it was like, what two numbers, when, when you multiply them, matter in which order? It wasn't numbers, it was matrices. So this was one of the great insights, you know, rival to Einstein in terms of the depth of what it told us about the universe. Most of us haven't really heard of Paul Dirac. We don't realize that he has one of the three most important equations in physics. We're talking about bedrock reality. What is the construct made of? The way I do it is I think of it as a newspaper story. There's where and when did it happen, there was who and what was involved, and there's how and why. Okay? So where and when is space and time. The who and the what, the who is the spinorial stuff. It's like electrons, it's protons, neutrons, quarks, the stuff that we're made of. And then you and I are only able to see each other because we're passing photons back and forth, which are force particles. They're not spinorial. They come back to themselves after 360 degrees. They don't require 720. So this is sort of the, you know, if you were going to go to a play, you'd have the dramatic personnel of the play given to you at the beginning. So this is what this universe is. It's a story about space and time, where and when about what is in that, you know, like who are the players and what equipment are they using? That's like bosons and fermions. And then there's the how and the why, which is the equations and the Lagrangians. 